round table, but I hope you'll pick up your copy of Yes Weekly. Sometimes, Ogie, they put my name right here, and then I hide the paper, see? So I'm going to hold it right like that, then they can see it. All right. Okay. Then they get my name and the paper. All right, that's all the time we have. No, uh, on, now it's time for the round table. On my right, but on... <laughs> What are you laughing at? <laughs> On my right, but always the political left, Ogie Elvin, the great broadcaster journalist. Next to him, Dr. Don Martin, vice chair of the Forsyth County Commissioners, who you saw earlier in the program talking about that much-needed tax to help teacher salary. And next to him, bringing up the rear, is David Daggett, who was on earlier as well, talking about the 321 dash. Guys, let's get right to it. And I'm going to skip over Don Martin for this first question. Uh, as I said, Don and school superintendent Harrison, Dr. Harrison appeared earlier to talk about the quarter cent sales tax that can go to help to pay teacher salaries, to pay them more. Uh, Ogie and David, are you okay with a quarter cent sales tax that would allow us to help pay our teachers more money, Ogie? Actually, I don't think it's enough. I, I, I would be willing to pay more than that or somehow another revenue stream to give teachers what they really deserve or at least bring us up to the national average. Yeah, David, we, we seem to lose hundreds of teachers from this area and through the state uh, because they don't get paid enough. What do you think about the sales? Yeah. I, I think absolutely, but in addition to that, it needs to be combined with support and respect of our teachers, and we all need to do that. We need to support them, not just with money, but emotionally, uh, pat them on the back, thank them for what they do, right. uh, encourage them in the classroom, volunteer in the classrooms, volunteer in our schools. I agree. It's the most mm -hmm. important thing we can do. And you and Griff do a lot of that with the backpack program and some other things, mm -hmm. too. All right. So, Don, we've embarrassed you now, and we've supported the, uh, the tax thing. Great right. answers, great yeah, answers. They are good <laughs> answers. All right, uh, I, this is not a political or an impeachment question, but it's a question. As soon as President Trump was acquitted, he fired two of the people who were called to testify before, before Congress. Now, in general, guys, and especially since we have an attorney on the set here, in general, should it be illegal for any employer to fire an employee for complying with a subpoena? Ogie Overman. In general, yes, but specifically, I think the person who ordered the people not to testify to not order the subpoena should be fired. Yeah, well, I know what you were going to, Don, what do you think? Well, I, I think the, the reason for the dismissal was certainly not the fact that they were, they were subpoenaed and, and went. I think the issue is the president is looking for people to be loyal supporters, got to trust them, and I, I think he has that right. All right, I think Trump was calling uh, Ogie just now, too. His phone went. Was that your phone? I wish it were. No, all right. All right, David Daggett. Now, uh, I, th I think so, but I am a very, very strong believer that we need a separate and independent judicial system and that there should not be undue influence that crosses that line and interferes. It's an important part of our checks and balances. It it's what makes our country great. We need to respect that, and we need to protect that. All right, let's talk about respect here for a second. A high school principal in Washington State has been suspended for posting a distasteful comment on Facebook about Kobe Bryant's death uh, and the rape trial he once was involved with. He wasn't convicted of anything, but he was involved in it. And the principal said on Facebook, quote, karma has caught up with the rapist, unquote. As disrespectful as that statement is and was, should the high school principal have been suspended, Ogie? Yes, uh, not fired, but suspended. He was never convicted of rape. We don't know. I mean, it could be a gold digger. We really still don't know that. And, ba and bad taste to even put it out there. Exactly. Don, you, as a former school superintendent, what do you do with a teacher or a principal who does says things on Facebook? Well, something I've said many times is that there's a, principals have a higher standard of behavior. It may be a freedom of speech issue, but a higher standard of behavior is that you don't say things like that out in the public eye in front of others. David. It, it was certainly poor judgment. I agree with Don 100%. Our principals need to be leaders in our community, not uh, thrashing the trash around. You're okay with it, the suspension? I, I am okay with this. suspension. All right. Contrary to earlier reports, a new study conducted by the University of California at Berkeley shows that a majority of Native Americans are, are offended by the name Washington Redskins, <laughs> and they're offended by Native American mascots and Native American war chants among, on college campuses. Once and for all, guys, should we get rid of these names and mascots, Ogie? You know, Jim, I've been a skin through thick and thin, and I've fought the other side of this battle, but I've come around to believe we need to get rid of the Redskins. Rid of all that. I, I, I really like do. the, uh, really and do. Don, there's the, the tomahawk, chop, tomahawk chop stuff with <clears throat> some of the teams. What do you think? Get rid of them? Well, it, it, it's, it's been litigated at the, at the public K-12 school level, and, and usually there are issues that surround it, and most districts have changed once they were challenged. 
But it, I, I think it is kind of, a, you know, when you get into the private sector, a little different. And I think I'm a little surprised you take a Florida state, which is a public university and, and, and their Indian symbolism. I, it's kind of local, partly to me. I mean, it's part of that has to do, I'm not so sure what kind of review Florida State gets for that. David. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Don. It's, it's a bit situational. If you have something that's clearly offensive, I think we need to do something about it. The flip side is, I think the Seminoles brokered a deal with the Seminole Indians, mm -hmm. and so it's supportive in recognizing as, as somewhat of a tribute, mm -hmm. and so it's a different situation. So you have different situations in different places, and we have to recognize that and be sensitive to it. I know this question is not earth-shaking, but I wanted to throw it in there anyway, because uh, we're talking about names of things. The old, what I called old I-40, Business 40, <laughs> is now Salem Parkway. So guys, are you and everybody else you know going to go and say, hey, Ogie, I'm taking Salem Parkway to the TV studio, or are they just going to be like me and say, take old 40 to the to Winston. What do you think is going to happen with that? Uh, old habits die hard, Jim. I probably I still call Lee Street. You know, Gate City Boulevard is still Lee. Yeah. The Wyndham is still the GGO to me, so yeah. I, I don't think. It'll Don, be. what do you think? It, it takes a while, but I think eventually I'll get around to that name because I used to say Old Business Forty. That's right. Even more That's what I do, David. Well, we're all of the age where <laughs> we remember Old Forty and New Forty and Old Business Forty. Yeah. But the very first time I said it to my son, Salem Parkway, he said, "What are you talking about?" Now, so you, your yeah, son did. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, I don't even know how the four of us are going to get home because we were going to take Salem Parkway, but we don't know where that is. Uh, finally, guys, scientists say they've developed a pill uh, that when taken daily will equal one hour of exercise. Now we have an Ironman athlete at the end of the table here. So guys, do you plan to take this pill instead of exercising? No, Gilderman. I'm definitely not an Ironman like uh, <laughs> David Mr. Daggett. I would, well, here's the thing. I hope, they, I hope that's true because my wife can exercise. If there were a pill that would able, enable her to get the benefits Somebody who's of disabled. Action, she's disabled and cannot. That's it would be wonderful. Probably yeah. a metabolism thing or something. Uh, uh, Don. That's a great point. I, I, I can still exercise and I want to do it. David Daggett, before your it, Ironman competitions, <laughs> will you take a pill? It, uh, it, it's interesting. They started testing for this in elite level athletes a number of years ago and a couple cyclists got, got caught with it. The MIT researchers, I believe they were MIT that studied this, one of the things they found was that there's a hundred other benefits from exercise besides just the physical oh, health. Oh, sure, sure. And you get none of that from the pill. Yeah, my wife right. looks so, at me different when I exercise, but if I take a pill, I don't think it'll be yeah. the same thing. <laughs> all right, whatever that means, I don't know. Well, that's all the time we have, ex oh, except for this. Last week, police in Wisconsin ticketed the famous Oscar Mayer Wienermobile for refusing to yield to other traffic. Said the cop, these Wienermobile drivers always think they can hot dog it. <laughs> You notice, if you notice, <laughs> well, David, we didn't ask for your opinion. We, uh, it was just a comment. No, no that's a statement of fact. We don't want any opinions on that. For all of us here on Tribe Today, we're going down Salem Parkway. We'll see you next time.